Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? Happy Thursday. I hope you are doing very, very well and I hope you are ready for a freaking amazing book haul because a lot of these books are going to wind up on your TBR because I was going through them before this video and I can't believe I haven't read them yet because they all sound amazing. So I have a list here. So as I always say, please get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, because I have a feeling you're going to be buying or adding these books to your TBR, having your library buy them, because they all sound amazing. Um, so where are we gonna start? We're gonna start with the fact that a lot of this book haul is inspired by one Matthew Sharapa. Um, he has raved about a few books, and I have popped a few of those books. So we are going to get started with what he has called, I want to say, maybe his new favorite book ever, and that is Vita Nostra. This is by Marina and Sergei Dychenko, translated from the Russian by Julia Metov Hershey, and this is out from Harper Voyager. Now, I cannot do this book justice, so I am going to read you the inside just a little bit. This is about Sasha. Now, Sasha, at the beginning of the book, I guess, is on vacation with her mother when she meets this mysterious man. And he basically, um, how does it say it? It says he is powerless to refuse when this strange and unusual man with an air of the sinister directs her to perform a task with potentially scandalous consequences. He rewards her effort with a strange gold coin. And then I guess over time, he continues to have her do tasks and give her coins. And then eventually he tells her to take those coins and report to this school called the Institute of Special Technologies. And though she does not want to go to this unknown town or school, she also feels it's the only place she could ever be. Against her mother's wishes, she goes there and she quickly discovers the Institute's special technologies are unlike anything that she has ever encountered. The books are impossible to read, the lessons are obscure to the point of maddening, and the work refuses memorization. When Matthew Sarapa stops life to read a book, we all take notice. I want to let you know that the booktube world here uh, in the U.S. bought this book in bulk because he raved about it so greatly. So that is Vita Nostra by Marina and Sergei Dachenko, and that's translated from the Russian by Julia Metov Hershey. And that cover, I just want to pull that just right there because it is fan. Fantastic. So that's the first book in this book haul. Come on, this book haul is going to be amazing. Uh, the next book that I'm going to tell you about is Family Trust by Kathleen Wang. This came out a few months ago, and I met um, Kathleen, uh, Kathy Wang, and she is just as lovely as I expected. Now, I have been told that this is sort of a combination of the book The Nest, do you remember that? And Crazy Rich Asians, if they sort of got together and had a child. This is the story of, let me get, Stanley. Stanley is the patriarch of a family who at the very start of the book is diagnosed with pink pancreatic cancer, and it is found out that he's going to die. And now the the sort of the mythos of this family is that he is extremely wealthy and everyone wants to know how that is going to break down. And it's going, it's a family saga slash comedy of errors. Um, I've read the first, I don't know, 50 or 60 pages. It's very funny. The characters are, uh, some of them are rough. They're very hard to like, which you know I like a sort of an offbeat sort of personality. Um, yeah, and I've heard nothing but great things about it. This cover is also beautiful. Um, so that's Family Trust by Kathleen. I keep wanting to say Kathleen, and it's Kathy. Kathy Wing. I'm sorry, Kathy. Okay, getting back to my friend Matthew Sharapa. He raved about The Court Dancer by Kyung Suk Shin, and this is translated from the Korean by Anton Her, who I follow on in, uh, Twitter, and he is just fantastic. This is the story of a French diplomat that winds up at the Korean court and falls in love with a dancer and convinces the emperor to allow him to take the dancer back to France, where she lives sort of a life of freedom that she's never had before. And she becomes a translator of French literature into Korean, or is it the other way around? She begins translating and publishing Joseon literature into French with another Korean student. But 
as and it says even in this new world great sorrow awaits her grieving and suffering is only amplified by homesickness and the longing for her oldest friend but when she goes home things don't turn out the way that, that she wants them to so that's the court dancer by kyung suk shin translated from the korean by anton her and again another high recommendation from my friend matthew sharapa and then we have another one it's coming I think we're done with Matthew Sharapa books after this one. And that is The City of Ash and Red by He Young Pyun, translated by Sora Kim Russell. Now, I'm just going to read this one because it's a little bit different. It says, Distinguished for his talents as a rat killer, the nameless protagonist of this novel is sent by the extermination company he works for on an extended assignment in C, a country descending into chaos and paranoia, swept by a contagious disease and flooded with trash. No sooner does he disembark than he is whisked away by quarantine officials and detained overnight. Isolated and forgotten, he realizes that he is stranded with no means of contacting the outside world. Still worse, when he finally manages to reach his old friend, he is told that his ex-wife's body was found in his apartment, and he is the prime suspect. I have no more need to read more to you, because if that doesn't get you to want to read City of Ash and Red, I don't know what will. Sort of reminds me a little bit of, I don't know, was it King Rat by China Melville? Don't, don't quote me on that. But this is City of Ash and Red by He Yong Pyun, translated by the, from the Korean by Sora Kim Russell. Oh, gosh. Korean literature has just been killing me lately. You know, we're all friend, uh, fans of um, uh, The Vegetarian. And then I've, God, I've just read so many good stuff out of Korea. So much. So much good stuff. Okay. Next, we're on to our Europa book that I picked up one day when I was at my Oakland favorite little bookstore, uh, uh, East Bay Booksellers. And that is Nothing But Dust by Sandrine Colette. And this is translated from the French by Alison Anderson. And Alison Anderson has translated a bunch of the um, Amelia Nothbaum books for Europa. Now, here's all I know. This is a family saga. This is a family saga set on a farm where the father has passed. The children blame one of the sons and there is a crazy mother. I'm just going to say to you, it says here, for readers of um, Coetzee's Disgrace, The Riding of Dorothy Allison, and The Southern Gothic of William Faulkner, Nothing But Dust is a gripping, unsentimental, ultimately majestic story about the life in one of the most inhospitable places on earth. Family Saga, Disgrace by one of my favorite books ever, William Faulkner, one of my favorite writers ever, all combined into one amazing book. And this cover is gorgeous too. So that is Sandrine Colette's Nothing But Dust, out from Europa, translated by, I keep forgetting her first name, Allison Anderson. Yeah, definitely going to dive into this one soon. I think this may be a January read for me. While there, I also picked up this book that I had never heard of, What We Own by Golnaz Hush, I'm not going to even try, guys, because I will butcher that name. And she is from Iran, I want to say. She was born in Iran, and she fled to Sweden. Um, this is the story of a woman who is about 50 years old, who is diagnosed and told that she has about five months to live, and at the same time finds out that her daughter is going to have a baby. And this is about the, the trauma of coming to terms with your life, the anger at not being able to experience your family, and what, how do you say goodbye? I have a feeling that this book is going to make me bawl my eyes out. I think this cover is phenomenal. And um, I, I, was it translated from the Swedish? It was translated from the Swedish by Elizabeth Clark Wessel. So again, that's what we owe. And I'm just going to hold the author's name up there because I will not say that right. And this is out by Mariner. Mariner killing it lately uh, with some amazing novels. Goodness gracious. The next book was a purchase mainly because A Symmetry by Lisa Halliday has been on every top 10 list I've looked at lately for best novels that came out in 2018. And when a book pops up that many times on your periphery and you have not heard of it, it is time to buy it. Now, I realized that I had seen it a number of times. So yeah, I don't know anything about it. 
All I know is that it is on so many top 10 lists. It's told in three parts. There are three sections that I believe, it says told in three and distinct and uniquely compelling sections. Asymmetry explores the imbalance that spark and sustain many of our dramatic human relations. And equities in age, power, talent, wealth, fame, geography, and justice. I'm not gonna say much more about it because I don't wanna know much more. A bunch of people I trust have put this on their 2018 best of list. So that is Asymmetry by Lisa Holiday. That is enough for me. Okay, two books left. I have seen this book everywhere. The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. Now this is called The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle in uh, the UK, I believe. And it was shortlisted for the Costa New First Book Award um, this year. Now this is the story of Evelyn Haskell, uh, Hardcastle, who is going to be killed. And our main character is named Aidan Bishop. And every day repeats and every day will repeat until he determines who is going, who is the killer of Evelyn Hardcastle. However, every day he winds up in the different body of a different person present on that day. So it's going to have sort of that Groundhog's Day effect. He's in a different person, a different situation as he tries to solve the same exact murder. I think that sounds so interesting, so fun. I bet this is going to be a good, crunchy, sort of you can sit down and fly through it sort of read. And all the good ways. You know, all those good ways that sometimes you just want a book to envelop you. The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton, I think is going to be that book for me. This one I'm excited about. Last but not least is a book that definitely needs to be mentioned and we all should be definitely reading. Well-Read Black Girls, Finding Our Stories, Discovering Others. This is edited by Gloria Edom, who is the founder of the Well-Read Black Girl Book Club. And if you do not follow her on Twitter or in any facet, you must because she is fantastic. This is a collection of essay by many, many women. It has, the starting essay is by, um, Jasmine Ward, who you guys know I am in utter love with. I believe arguably one of the top five writing, uh, living writers in America currently. Um, it also has an essay about someone's love of Zora Neale Hurston. Zora Neale Hurston is one of my passion reads, Their Eyes Were Watching God, um, Dust on the Tracks. So love her. Don't think enough people recognize how important she is to American literature. There is an essay in here by um, Morgan Jerkins, who wrote um, probably my favorite nonfiction collection of uh, essays this year. Tayari Jones has an essay in here. Gabrielle Sidibe has an essay in here. I want, oh, Zinzi Clemens, Nicole Denise Ben, N.K. Jemison, Jacqueline Woodson. You, I mean, come on, you guys. This is full of amazing, amazing women writing essays. Um, so this is Well Read Black Girl by Gloria Edom. And you guys, this is just one of those naked hardbacks that is everything that is perfect. It's just so beautiful. So again, Well Read Black Girl, Gloria Edom. And this is an amazing stack of books to tell you about. I hope every single one of these books made it on your TBR because they are about to be shelved on mine. I hope you guys, as always, if you're a return subscriber, thank you so much. If you're new to my channel, I hope you liked this video. As always, happy reading. I'll talk to you soon and I'll say goodbye right now. I'm so excited about these books. I can't even close my video right. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.